I'm Captain Perry, and my mission here is to build a strong, trailerable, 14-foot sailboat that's watertight and custom-built to cross oceans. She's built with the foam sandwich method and features twin keels, a scow bow, and a Jungstrom rig, which means the whole mast is freestanding and spins to furl the sail. Here's where I am currently with the project. I started building frames C4 and C2 in the previous episode. The mast step is installed. The construction of a structural grid is proceeding nicely, and frames C5, C6, and the transom are in place. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to follow the build. It is Sunday, February 6, 2022 in San Diego, California. And today I'm going to be showing you the work I did to finish up frames C2 and C4, as well as something I've been looking forward to, another vertical panel, which is the bow. So I had to get that in the scow bow shape and get it fiberglass. After that work was complete, the only missing frame left is frame C3, uh, which will go here. The only problem is I don't really know the di dimensions of that yet. I need to put the other frames up and bend a batten around to find the horizontal dimensions. I might be able to do it with a model, but I might as well get more accurate res results with the real boat. Okay, I'm going to show you with a time lapse how I reinforce these uh, rounded edges of this, uh, what's basically a hatch hole in C2 up in the bow. And what it's going to be is some chop strand mat, like this, chop strand mat, and then six ounce woven mat over that. First, I'm just going to wet out. This with some unthickened epoxy first. I've been making some developments in keel design recently as well. I was, um, you might remember, I was just going to use flat plates of steel and have a flat plate of steel against the bottom of the hull and then another flat plate going down into the water, canted out 15 degrees, and it was it's twin keels. If you want the reasoning for why I chose twin keels, uh, check out episode OCSS007. Twin keels are gonna be, they're gonna, each one will have lead attached, and each one will have 32.5 kilograms, which is 71.5 pounds. And if we double up that we get a total of 65 kilograms or 143 pounds. So the new idea is to have a foil shape instead of just flat steel. And if you're gonna have 20, twin keels, you really want the foil shape. And I chose a foil for this um, 3D model I made. I downloaded a free 3D modeling program called a Fusion 360 and I modeled out what I wanted the keels to look like and I just chose a, a foil that I liked. The foil shape was called a Rhodes G34-IL and basically the keels will still have those flat plates but I can add in a foil shape just by adding some foam core to one side of the steel plate and fiberglassing over it with a foil shape. So the benefits for having the foil shape in a twin keel is um, one of the twin keels, when you're keeled over, its lift is helping to keep you from slipping to leeward. Now the other keel, when you're keeled over, uh, the lift will be acting down and that'll be helping to right you. So the outboard side of the twin keels is flat. The inboard side is the one that gets the curve and generates the lift. Let me know your thoughts on this change or the uh, twin keels idea in the comments.
I just now finished all the peel ply and all that took me about one hour. The peel ply is really winning me over now. I, I did really like it on this project. I could definitely see it, you know, pushing everything down and all those little hairs and stuff that were up got pushed down and I think the end result is going to be a lot nicer. I took the peel ply off of C2 and then gave it a light sanding with 120 grit on the orbital sander and turned out very nice. Feels nice and smooth. I'm not going to bother doing fairing compound on the whole frame because I'm not going for pre for perfection here. Just like if from 10 feet away it looks beautiful, then I've done a good job. The trouble with being a perfectionist is uh, it looks beautiful in the end, but it just takes forever to get there to the end. This one is going to go right here. Now with all the edge work on C2 done, I'm going to switch over to C4. This one's it's upside down. This is a big sucker. Um, so this is C4 upside down. So from this mark around, I'm going to reinforce the edge. And then up here, where the floor is going to be, I need to fill this channel with uh, thickened epoxy. And I'm going to do the, try and do all this in one go. You've already seen all this, so let's just skip to the end. Okay, it's an hour and a half later and we're done. Uh, this time, instead of peel ply, I just tried using some strips of clear plastic because even with the peel ply afterwards, I needed to sand to get the edges smooth against. So I figured if I've got to sand anyway, why not try just using plastic? We'll see how it works out. After working to sand all these edges where I reinforce the edge, it's okay, but I can still feel the edge and in some places there's even it's a little sharp where some of the threads are, are sticking out even though I sand it. So I'm going to mix up some fairing compound and try to just cover up anywhere that I feel with my hand where it's kind of sharp. I've got the frames fared to an acceptable level and look we have a new friend here the bow panel. So I've just been brainstorming how I'm going to make this bend to meet this bottom panel. And it also has to curve a bit this way. One, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, six pieces. Now I got the female mold assembled for the bow piece. These first three pieces go from high, medium, low, and then the last three are all the same. They're the lowest. This is the bottom of the top, bottom of the bow panel. Here's the top of the bow panel. And using the heat gun, I'm gonna form it to here. Well, here's the completed bow panel, and I'm pretty happy with the results. <clears throat> I got the shape I was looking for. It was a little more difficult than I thought it would be to get it to stay into that shape. I ended up putting a lot of weight on it to push it all down, and uh, the heat, even with using the heat gun a lot, it still didn't really want to stay in that shape. But it came out pretty good. Here's what it looks like in place. I'll still have to trim it a bit to get it to fit right in there. Check out the link in the description for the OCSS Facebook group. I post progress photos in there 
and there's other discussions going on. And there's some links in the description if you'd like to contribute to the project. I'll see you next week. Mr. Board, let's make all preparations. We're getting underway. Hey, uh, what's your name, buddy? Home. Home, we'll get back to your station, or I'll have you shot from a mutineer. Well, shoot something. Yeah.